You guys know I'm not a big fan of conspiracy theories. I made a video a, a few years back uh, debunking the whole idea behind the conspiracy theory mentality that so many people have, the flaws behind that that entire line of thinking. But I wanted to talk a little bit about one particular conspiracy theory that I've been seeing purported here in, in the last couple of years especially. And I've had some family members actually bring this one up to me here recently. And I wanted to talk about that. And it's this conspiracy theory where we are all being secretly implanted with microchips. And this conspiracy theory really got started about three years ago. In 2020, the pandemic, everybody had to get vaccinated. And there was this conspiracy theory out there that we were all being implanted with these microchips through the vaccine and that Bill Gates was behind it. That was another thing. They tried to tie Bill Gates into it because he was a big proponent of everyone getting vaccinated. So somehow Bill Gates was the one behind the secret government implants. And then some people tried to tie the 5G phone network into it because 5G was a big conspiracy theory. So how can we tie in the 5G conspiracy theory with the chip implant conspiracy theory well the 5g mobile network it actually works off of these microchips that are implanted into people right the 5g network is running off of you because you're carrying the 5g chips inside of you and it's just ridiculous and of course then you've got the religious zealots that think that these implants are the mark of the beast right that the, 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 the bible foretold in the book of revelation and it's this kind of conspiracy theory that really highlights why I don't particularly find conspiracy theories all that interesting is because honestly every single conspiracy theory I've ever heard of has been completely and utterly ridiculous. I, it's so stupid to think that the government has to implant you with a microchip so that they can track you. Think about it. The government has been tracking every single one of us, every single one of us for decades. They don't have to secretly implant you with a microchip to track you. And the whole idea of microchipping human beings, that's been around for decades. I mean, going back 20 years ago, there was a company, one of the original companies that was doing this, they were implanting chips into people because the chips had a uh, ID number that could be scanned by medical personnel, which could be very helpful. For example, if a person couldn't speak or wasn't conscious or whatever that ha happens to be, you know, they go to a hospital and they could just quickly get scanned. And I know that person, I know that condition. Another company, they were developing implants to store doses of medication. And then the microchip would release the medication on a predetermined schedule. That's kind of cool because some people have serious needs that they're, they're on a schedule where they need medication, but sometimes you can't trust the patient themselves to actually give themselves the medication. Sometimes patients just refuse to take the medication they actually need. Even more fascinating, there's a company that was developing an artificial kidney that contained some of these microchips. And the microchips kind of worked as a, a network and they essentially worked as a dialysis machine. And that's kind of cool. Think about how many people in the world have kidney conditions, kidney failure, you know, lost a kidney, whatever it happens to be, you've got some kind of condition that you require dialysis. I actually looked up the statistic and it's like 500,000 people here in the U.S. require dialysis at some point during a year. That's a lot of people. And the fact that we have such amazing technology at our hands now, it's, it's pretty amazing. But of course, the conspiracy theorists, they are, they're not trying to see the positives in this. What they wanna see is these subdermal microchips that are getting implanted in human beings, whether it being under the skin or in a bloodstream or whatever, you know, these chips, what are, what are the conspiracy theorists say these chips are used for? It's to track you, right? It's to track all your movements. It's basically a complete invasion of your privacy. So the government knows what you're doing, when you're doing it, how you're doing it. And, and again, if you think about this for about 30 seconds, the government doesn't need a microchip for any of this information. Now, are there companies out there that are actually microchipping human beings so that they can track them? Yes, I'm, I'm sure that is actually happening because I'm sure that there are secretive government agencies that do that with their employees. There are probably some private companies that do that as well as far as really high security jobs where it could be very dangerous for someone, for example, to leak information or, you know, leak 
government secrets, things like that. So what we're going to do, we're going to chip all of our employees. That way we know where they are, who they're talking to. Yeah, I, I can I can see that actually happening in real life. Now, is that kind of microchipping ethical? I would say any kind of tracking of someone 24-7, 365, that's not ethical, right? I understand in the workplace needing to know what your employees are doing, but obviously at some point, these people have to go home, and if you're able to track what people are doing in the privacy of their own homes, that is never ethical. But the good news is the government does not need to implant a chip in you to invade your privacy, even the privacy of your home. The government already has all the information they need because, thankfully, we all chipped ourselves. We all microchipped ourselves with phones about 20 years ago. When we all decided, you know, around the year 2000 really everybody needed to carry a cell phone at that moment the government basically had us all chipped right and really cell phones date back you know really going back 30 years or more but really in the last 20 years we all every single one of us carry a phone that phone even back in the early days those phones were pinging a tower right a service tower so the government could triangulate all of our positions right they knew where each and every one of us were and of course, the phones have a microphone, obviously, so you can actually talk and make a call. And obviously, those microphones, they're not just there for you to actually make a call. Those microphones can also record you, even record you when you're not actually on the phone. That microphone's always listening, right? The government can actually listen through the phone at what you're doing. And of course, once we had the smartphones that came with the camera, that's even better because now I can not only listen to what you're doing, I can actually watch what you're doing through the phone. And then once you had the smartphones, then came the smart TVs, right? And then the tablets, and then your smart cars with the tablets in your car that had the mic and the camera and everything. And then of course you have your personal assistants, right? The PAs, you know, all the devices, the echoes and everything. All these devices in your house that you speak to that have a microphone, that microphone is listening 24 seven. And of course now we have the rise of AI and everybody is interacting with the these artificial intelligence beings right well, right now it's mostly just search engines and things like that but at some point it will be ai will be everywhere we will have ai devices all around us that we will interact with we will have conversations with we will speak to and of course who, who's going to get all of that information? Well, at some point, the government's getting all of that information. And I haven't even mentioned social media yet, which social media has been around for about 20 years now. And the rise of social media happened very fast, where everybody decided they needed to be on these big networks, like originally MySpace, and then Facebook, and Twitter, and Instagram. And we basically volunteer putting personal information on these sites. Billions of people around the world voluntarily put their personal Personal information on these social media sites and it's all being mined by the government so when these conspiracy theorists want to believe that the government is secretly microchipping people to track them right to data mine them to figure out what they're doing what they're thinking that's like the last thing the government needs to do for that information the government already has that information it kind of makes me wonder why do these conspiracy theorists want to believe that it's the government that has secretly bugged them, that's tracking them, right? I, I think the reason is because a lot of these conspiracy theorists, not all of them, some of them are complete idiots, but some of them are halfway intelligent. And the halfway intelligent conspiracy theorist, he knows the truth. He knows the government didn't bug him. He bugged himself. But of course, a conspiracy theorists, or, or really humans in general, they're never going to accept blame for their poor decisions in life. It's actually a normal typical kind of human characteristic is that we love to deflect blame so that we don't feel bad for the, the things that we did ourselves, right? We don't want to feel bad about our own decisions, so we deflect that blame. And sometimes we deflect that blame because we just don't want to look bad in front of others. And unfortunately, I think that's why a lot of these conspiracy theorists subscribe to their beliefs is because they know what happened. They know that at the end of the day, we, the human race, we did this to ourselves. No secret government plan did this. We did this. I, and we came up with the plan ourselves. We did this. Everything that is wrong with society at the end of the day 
each and every one of us had a hand in it, but we don't want to accept that blame. So we've got to put it off onto some weird entity that may or may not even exist, but it doesn't matter. As long as it gets that blame off of us, we're good. Anyway, just something to think about, guys. Peace.